Okay, so the observer. Okay, so oh, we'll just do it the usual way, the muck. Let's, let's get the muck, because okay, that's how I usually start. So now the, the mug represents, uh, well, let, let's, let's use the mug. The mug is, first of all, a mug is what I call a meaningless object. It's a neutral object, unless you're, unless you're a mug addict. But uh, otherwise, it's, uh, it's a neutral object. Now, when there's a neutral object uh, and there's not enmeshment or there's not a special magical projection onto an object, everyone who's observing it, you know, like... Um, no one is the mug. It's very, very clear that the mug is an object which is being observed. Not only that, there, there, it's very easy to have detached observation of the mug as well. Okay, so... Also, here's the thing with a mug. A mug is an object. And if a mug is an object and it passes before you, it's still not you. Yeah. Even if it gets nearer to you, it's not here. Or if there's, been, if there's ever been a time when the mug's not been in front of you, you still exist. And still you're not the mug. And even if the mug was in front of you for three years, it still wouldn't be you, because there was a you here when it wasn't here. You see, it just doesn't matter if it's here or most of the time. Also, a mug is something that can be uh, here, or it can be very in front of you, it can seem to be all of you, it can seem to be not much of you, it can change. So, so it's an object, first of all, a mug is an object, and it's clear that it's being observed, and uh, also there is no, there's not much of an association with mug, so there's detached obs observing of it. Okay. So everyone is clear they're not the mug. Uh, uh, so that's good. Okay, so the next thing is, Thoughts, okay. So let's go now. Thoughts come and go, uh, and sometimes there is there are times when there's no thoughts, okay. So if there's any thoughts going on now, is there the experiencing? Can one be in the experience of being the observer of thoughts? Yeah. So, are we, are we experiencing being in the observing? Nod your head if, you're, if you can be in the position of the observer. If you're having trouble being the observer of thoughts, see how you're identifying yourself and see if there is an observer of the you as you understand you to be. Is there an observer of the you as you understand you to be? Is something observing you as you understand you? Yeah? Okay. So you just have to do it this way. So when, remember, it, oh well, remember, if, if there's an attachment to, to an object, then it becomes hard to be the detached observer. Yeah. So if one is attached to thoughts, if one is enmeshed with thoughts, it becomes hard to be the in the position of the observer of thoughts because there is, a, there is an interest, there's an identification, there's a fascination with the thoughts. If this fascination or addiction to thoughts, then it becomes difficult to be the detached observer of thoughts. Yeah. So, let, so if you're having trouble being the observer of thoughts, just let go of the interest. They're not interesting. They're boring. Yeah. And just be the observer. The other thing to do is like, if you're listening to me and you're trying to understand what I'm saying intellectually, then you've got to let that go. Let go, of, let go of listening with your mind, with your head, with your ego. Because that which observes your thoughts is not uh, your head. Yeah. So you can't think about what I'm saying. You have to let go of... The observer of thinking is prior to, before thinking. Yeah. So just let go of the thoughts and you go there. So thoughts pass. Uh, ne what about if there's feelings? Are there any feelings? Is there a feeling of tiredness, sleepiness? Is there uh, a feeling of anxiety? 
Is there a feeling of trauma? Is there a feeling of wanting something? However that feeling is arising, recognize that if there's, a, let's say there's a feeling of tiredness or there's a feeling of fear, realize that that fear will have a, that emotion will have a boundary, it will be limited. Or even if you're feeling exhausted, how, what's the boundary of that exhaustion or that tiredness? So if there is a boundary around it, then something is observing the boundary, something is observing the feeling which is not the feeling. Yeah? So go to that which is witness, you know, when I say observing, go to that which is either witnessing, observing or perceiving. They're all interchangeable words. Any sensation or feeling in the body or even the limits of the body. Okay? So now there should be the experience of the observer of thoughts, the experience of the observer of any feeling being experienced because a thought is just a passing object. Any feeling of the body or the limitations of the body, the body is just an object. If there's a feeling, or even if there's tiredness or fear, the observer of the fear is not, the, is not fear. It's observing fear. So you're in the detached observer of fear. What about um, time? Is there the experience of time right now? Is, is there some aspect of consciousness which is tracking time? If there is, then go to that which witnesses time. That which witnesses time has no interest or investment or attachment to time. So be in that which, be in the observing of any aspect of consciousness which is trying to latch onto or trying to register time. Yeah. That's, so the observer, the, that which observes time is prior to time and that which is so, if the observer of a mug is not a mug, okay? The observer of a mug is not a mug. <clears throat> Let's say there's a feeling of fear in the body. The observer of the awareness of the object of fear is not fear, okay? Let's say there's the experience of time, or there's a tracking of time within consciousness. That which observes time is not time, is prior to time. Time does not exist <clears throat> in the observer of time. Because that which observes a mug is not a mug. The observer of a mug is the detached observer of a mug is not a mug. The detached observer of fear in the body is not fear. Because that which registers the object is not the object. Yeah, that which registers fear. What about location? Is there is there um, is there a sense of location in the room? Okay. If there's a sense of location, like oh, I'm located in this location. Well, the observer of location, be the, that which observes location, is the observer of location is not in location, it's locationless. Location does not exist in that which observes location. Now, this is the practice of what's traditionally called through, um, from, you know, from those who do Advaita, self-inquiry. Inquiring into the nature of self. So can the self, can the self be a location? Can the true self be, be in a specific location? Can it be <coughs> in time? Can it be a feeling? <coughs> can it be limited? Yeah. So, so we've done, <coughs> so what we've done so far, we've gotten to a place. Now experience your experience right now. If your experience is limited, if it's feeling tired, if it's feeling, if it's, if you're experiencing yourself, and when I say going to that, another way of saying it, I mean there is an author that's written the book The Untethered Soul. But if there is a tether, or if there is an attachment to something which feels constricted or limited, just let that go, and be the witnesser, uh, releasing that tether which tethers you to that which makes you limited or constricted. Now, again, wherever you are now, is the experience of self, is there any feeling of being contracted, limited, tired, in time, in location, heavy? Because whatever that is, let's say there's a feeling of heaviness right now. Well, that heaviness is an object that can be here or not be here. What's observing the heaviness? 
or untethered from that and be the detached observer or perceiver or witnesser of that. In this place is there heaviness? Does the observer of heaviness experience heaviness? No, it doesn't. So again, you need to be, and when I say the word you, I'm not talking to the little you, but the experiencing now, if it's limited in any way, contracted, tethered, attached, identified, then be that which is prior to that. What is witnessing that? If there's still an experience of being in the room, what's witnessing the room? And what's witnessing that? If there's any feeling of limitation or duality or contraction, then that is an object which is also being witnessed. None of this is relating to using your thinking. That should have gone a long time ago, so you should not be in the realm of thoughts. Now we're in the realm of experience. And, and being in the witnesser of any form of limited experience. And if, that, if you're in the witnesser of any form of limited experience, then the witnesser of that, if that witnesser is limited or contracted, well, what's witnessing that? Because that's an object that's being witnessed. At a certain point, everything will dissolve away into a field of, of hard to say, it's limitless, it's limitless, it's timeless, it's locationless, it's boundaryless, it's free of all contraction, it's not a here or a there, it's not a this or a that. It can never be born, it can never die, it never changes or passes. It can never face death because it was never born. <laughs>